Ah, it's good to be back. Right, it's time to talk about that botched Sony Dolby Vision update on Bravia X1 Extreme TVs. Hello everyone, Vincent Thiel from HDTV Test here. I'm a professional calibrator and TV reviewer. So, last week, Sony rolled out its long-awaited Dolby Vision firmware update on Bravia televisions with the company's X1 Extreme chipset, such as the Sony A1E OLED, the X930E, the X940E, and the Z9D in the USA. The firmware update happened after CES, that's why I didn't cover this issue during the show. And, as you can probably see over the past week or so, I was busy wrapping up the videos from CES, which is why I didn't find the time to do a video on this topic until now, otherwise it would be all wrong chronologically. Another thing is that I'm based in the United Kingdom, where this Dolby Vision firmware update hasn't actually gone live yet, so I didn't have the opportunity to test the problem myself. But in a nutshell, here is what exactly happened. Sony TV owners updated their sets with the Dolby Vision firmware and found that their TVs wouldn't play Dolby Vision content over HDMI at all, such as from the Oppo 203 Ultra HD Blu-ray player or the Apple TV 4K box. In terms of Dolby Vision, only streaming from the likes of Netflix and Amazon is supported. After some investigation, it turns out that there are different Dolby Vision bitstream profiles to cater for different device implementations, either a GPU accelerated software implementation, full hardware implementation, or a combination of both. And the profile implemented by Sony's Dolby Vision update was actually not compatible with the profile implemented on existing Dolby Vision source devices, including the Oppo 203 and the Apple TV 4K box. If you want to get more technical, Dolby Vision streams can be either single layer, for example, iTunes movies from Apple TV 4K box, or dual layer, a base layer and an enhancement layer, for example, from Ultra HD Blu-ray. And the enhancement layer can be either minimal enhancement layer or MEL, or full enhancement layer. Within a single profile, the base layer codec level, the enhancement layer codec level, and the total combined Dolby Vision level are all kept to a specific maximum resolution, frame rate, and bit rate. So, different Dolby Vision profiles will have a different cross compatibility for single layer, or base layer, or enhancement layer. If all of that went over your head, don't worry. When I learned about this, I said, FA! I mean, not only do we have to contend with Dolby Vision versus HDR10, even within Dolby Vision itself, there's a format war going on. What's next? Dolby Vision Plus? But if you're a Sony X1 Extreme TV owner and are worried that you'll never get a Dolby Vision firmware that works over HDMI and USB, let me tell you this. When Sony demoed the Dolby Vision firmware update to me on the A1 OLED back in November last year, it was done over a USB thumb drive. The Sony X700 4K Blu-ray player and Sony Z9D Dolby Vision demo I saw at CES two weeks ago was done over HDMI. So I sincerely hope that Sony and Dolby can work together to resolve this issue soon and let Sony X1 Extreme TV owners enjoy Dolby Vision content over streaming, HDMI and USB ports, even if this requires other source devices to be firmware updated with the necessary profile. Since I mentioned Dolby Vision versus HDR10 Plus earlier, I might as well give my opinion on the current state of this format war. As you may or may not know, LG and Sony currently have no intention of supporting HDR10 Plus, and having spoken to TV engineers from both companies at CES, I was slightly surprised that they both gave basically the same reason for not joining HDR10 Plus. Their concern is that with HDR10 Plus, the dynamic metadata is generated automatically using an algorithm. So LG's argument is, if it's all done using an automatic algorithm anyway, their HDR Pro dynamic tone mapping technology, which is meant to simulate dynamic metadata from content with either static or even no metadata, can do a similar job anyway, which is why they are shunning HDR10 Plus for the time being. In addition, Sony said that unlike Dolby Vision, 
HDR10 Plus does not take into account the display device capabilities to improve the picture quality, since the dynamic metadata is generated by the stream converter automatically. Despite what LG and Sony say, and despite the known theoretical advantages of Dolby Vision, such as 12-bit support and ICTCP color model, I have to say, the HDR10 Plus momentum is looking very, very strong, if only because of lower overheads, such as authoring cost and bandwidth requirement for the dynamic metadata. Obviously, I haven't had the chance to do a direct head-to-head -head comparison of Dolby Vision versus HDR10 Plus myself, using my own content in my own test room. But even if Dolby Vision is superior, maybe HDR10 Plus will be good enough for most people and become more widely available. The Sony firmware update fiasco certainly wouldn't have helped the Dolby Vision course at all. If you found this video useful, please click the like button and subscribe to the HDTV Test YouTube channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.